Hello everyone, Michael Mortimer here, trial attorney. I'm going to be going over this particular witness's testimony, which is, uh, or who, is quite significant because uh, she was effectively impeached on her testimony, which I will explain later what that process is. But she's also significant that she is the first witness testifying on behalf of the state, in other words, the uh, prosecutor's case in chief, who is either an ear witness or eyewitness. This is the, the first in a string of people who will be testifying that they either heard something or saw uh, something on February 26, 2012. The uh, significance of this person's testimony is also that uh, Mark Amara, defense counsel, effectively uh, got into evidence the uh, fact that she is biased in favor of the state, most likely that her testimony was coached, uh, that she was uh, uh, in cahoots, so to speak, with the state, and also significantly that uh, she's a Trayvon Martin supporter. Now, uh, people are certainly entitled to have uh, 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 an opinion and uh, determine whose side they are on, so to speak. Uh, witnesses testifying their de for the defense are presumed to be uh, at least in a, a case in chief, in their direct case, are, are, are going to be uh, uh, George Zimmerman supporters. It, witnesses testifying on behalf of the prosecution on their case in chief are going to be presumed uh, Trayvon Martin supporters, so to speak. So uh, that's not the, uh, uh, the reason she has been discredited. Uh, in my opinion, the reason is because the, uh, as Mark Amaro will point out, she, she gave significant evidence, uh, testimony, uh, showing that she met with the uh, state prosecutor, I think for 40, 45 minutes, uh, just a few days ago, prior to her testimony, and uh, that is a long time to meet with the attorneys. The assumption is that she was uh, getting her story straight. So uh, later on I'll, I'll, I'll show you uh, why this was a very effective impeachment uh, testimony on uh, Mark O'Mara's behalf. He also got in that she liked on Facebook the Justice for Trayvon uh, page and she signed a petition calling for the arrest of uh, and prosecution of George Zimmerman. Those are significant facts showing that she is biased and prejudiced. The assumption being that her testimony is tainted in favor of uh, her desire to help Trayvon Martin. Or the family. Okay, so let's uh, get into this. Uh, one of the things I will be doing is fast forwarding, playing the video, but uh, of her testimony, but fast forwarding it so that uh, this can go by faster. Because her testimony, according to my video timer uh, counter, is one hour and 28 minutes. That's a long time. We're not going to sit here and listen to all of that. So I'll be uh, fast forwarding and playing at double, triple speed so we can get through this. Um, the other thing that I'll do is uh, show you her, the layout of her residence so you can get some idea of what she's talking about. I was very surprised that the uh, state attorney, Bernie De La Rianda, uh, didn't uh, get in an example uh, picture of where she lives, where she lived at the time on February 26th, and what she's talking about. I don't know. I don't know why uh, no one has done that. All right, enough chatter. 
Oh, um, just as, a, as an excuse, a warning, whatever, I don't have any notes. I'm just uh, talking from uh, off the top of my head. Uh, so uh, pardon for any poor grammar, uh, mistakes, misspeaking, etc. She's a nice looking witness. Uh, looks looks uh, very pleasant and looks very truthful, doesn't she? Uh, with that sweater, uh, nice nice uh, dress, house dress. Not a lot of makeup. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. You can get a little bit closer so that all the jurors can hear you. A, ple a pleasant manner about her. Take your name for the record and spell both names. Celine Bahador, S-E-L-E-N-E. B-A-H-A-D-O-O-R. What do you do for a living, ma'am? I work for a hospital. Okay. And you work there as a... Okay, I'm now going to speed up the testimony till we get to the, uh, the critical part of her testimony, her direct testimony. IT analyst. Yes. Have, Have you been working there since... Uh, two no. no. You have children? No. I'm not going to ask you uh, for your plan address, but you probably live in Seminole County, County, Florida. Yes. How long have you lived in Seminole County, Florida? Nine years. Is that this since about 2004? Uh, yes. Where did you grow up? Columbia. And you go to college in Philadelphia? Yes. Where did you go to college at? Columbia University. Tell us briefly about your education background. I have a bachelor's degree in health information management. I want to draw your attention back to last year, 2012, specifically to February of 2012. Were you living at that time at 2841, repeat news circle in Sanford, Seminole County, Florida? Yes. Back in February of 2012, how long have you been living at 2841 Retreat Youth Circle? Four years. And did you live there with anyone? Uh, my sister and niece. Uh, is your sister older or younger than you? Older. And your niece is about how old? Uh, three and a half. Okay. And your niece, how is she related to you? Is she your sister's daughter or is she another niece from another family member? Sister's daughter. I want to focus if we... February 26, 2012. Were you home at that address of 2841 Retreat Youth Circle? Yes. And was anyone home back with you that night? Yes, my sister, her friend, and my niece, her friend, and my sister. So your sister and your niece, your niece, your friend? Yes. Okay. Were you living at, at, at the time February? Is that the house? Yes. Or the home? Yes. Can you really tell us about the home? Uh, is it upstairs, downstairs? It's downstairs. Yes. Okay. Yes, three bedrooms and upstairs. Okay. Uh, is there a common, back, common backyard that you all have access to? Yes. And in terms of the access to the backyard, is there also a porch in that residence? Yes. Do you have a sliding back door? Yes. Is the porch that's in back of that residence enclosed, or is it just open? It's enclosed. And, and how is it enclosed? It's enclosed uh, with um, so like a screen door or a screen door with a door. Okay. Now, now around seven, seven, seven. Okay, here, I think it would be a good idea to have a um, a, a picture of the residence, an example of the residence, doesn't have to be her residence, uh, of the layout what she's talking about because this is critical testimony so here's here's what I'm referring to let's see uh, tut, 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 tut. see if I can get this to show up on screen okay here we go this is what she's talking about and again I think uh, a blow up of this would be handy for the jury to um, for her to point out what she's talking about. I'm hoping this little uh, magnifying glass shows up. Let's see what happens when I press this. Yeah. You know. So here you see what she's talking about. Over to the left here is the sliding glass door. Then this is her dining room right here. And this is her kitchen with a kitchen window. And this is overlooking the dog walk, as it's come to be called, or the T, uh, which could be over on either side. I believe the T on her testimony is going to be that it's over here on this side. And then the walkway, the dog walk, goes in this direction. And over on this side is the direction of uh, Trayvon Martin. Uh, Brandy Green's townhome where Trayvon Martin is staying over in this direction and this is the sidewalk uh, with the T. Let me uh, show you a picture of that again so we know what we're talking about. This is 
looking in from the uh, patio door this is an example of when you go in the entrance you can see the patio door back here and here's the foyer the front door is here uh, you can see a bathrooms there the dining room stairs are over here to go upstairs and the kitchen would be behind uh, over here where you can't see it so that's that layout let's see what else we've got here here is looking in from the sliding glass door here's the foyer that I mentioned before we saw in the last picture the front door going out to the street where there's cars and mailboxes and whatnot then the uh, bathroom was here the bathroom door here's the steps going upstairs this would be the sliding glass door and the kitchen area is over here all right and let's see what other illustration uh, pardon me while I search oh here's the the tea and the dog walk and the sidewalk okay so here is the tea this is where the confrontation took place John the one witness lives over here she'll be testifying about that she lives over here in this area and the T is here and down here is where Trayvon Martin was staying Brandy Green's townhome alright so dog walk Brandy Green's home this particular witness Celine her kitchen window would be one of these windows right here and John the other witness who's critical uh, testimony you'll be hearing about later is resides over here so note the distance very short distance here all right and then the uh, kitchen again which she's talking about sliding glass door kitchen with the window and again her testimony is when looking out the back sliding glass door to the backyard so to speak according to her testimony the T is over here and Trayvon Martin's residence so to speak is over here all right let's uh, let's get this back on the video and so, so if you walk in the front of that residence, residence uh, is, there is there like a foyer and, and then like a, like a dining room or living room area and then the kitchen would be the rear? Yes. Is, is the living room area also uh, adjoining in terms of going out to the, to the side side glass door? Yes. Okay. In that kitchen, is there a window in the kitchen? Yes. And is the sliding glass, is it a glass door in terms of you can actually see through it? Yes. Okay. You mentioned your sister and your niece and your niece's friend were home that evening. In terms of the time that I'm asking about, you mentioned you were downstairs in the kitchen. Did you know where your sister was? She was upstairs on the floor. Okay. And do you know where your niece and her friend were? Yes, they were in my niece's room, which faces the front of home. Now, um, that evening at that time, back in February of 2012, was it dark already outside around 7, 7, 10 p.m.? Yes. And in terms of the weather conditions, can you tell us if it had been raining or not? It was raining. It was like intermittent. Around 7, it was... So, like, did you hear when outside? Yes. When I said outside, in terms of your residence, was in the back or was in the front? And if you could, especially if you can recall the noise that you heard, can you describe? Okay, this is uh, the start of her critical testimony. So, uh, a lot of this video, it's an hour and 28 minutes, a lot of this video is going back and forth with sidebars and with uh, uh, the uh, Mark Romero defense counsel trying to get in impeachment evidence uh, such as the, uh, the uh, Facebook like page and things like that. Okay, so here we go with the critical testimony. 
it was not clearly distinguishable, distinguishable, but it sounded like no or uh. That's what it sounded like. And when you you, you said it sounded like no, like no, like no, yes, or ooh, right? Yes. Okay. Did you also hear some kind of movement outside in the back of your residence? Yes. Okay, listen to this. This is the critical part of this particular witness's testimony. What she is about to testify to caused Natalie Jackson, attorney for the Martin family, to tweet that her testimony blew Zimmerman's defense out of the water. Remember that Zimmerman is saying that Trayvon Martin attacked him. He 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 he, he backtracked and and confronted Zimmerman. What the prosecutors are saying, and Benjamin Crump attorney and Natalie Jackson attorney, what they're all saying is no. What happened is George Zimmerman pursued chase after Trayvon and confronted him not the other way around so listen to what this particular witness is saying okay, can you just fly back to the jury please it sounded like running from left to right on the, in the rear pathway okay. and when you say from left to right if I were your resident and I was looking outside you're talking about from the left to the right, if you're looking straight out into the backyard? Yes. Okay. And when you say it sounded like running, what do you mean by that? It sounded like something hitting the, the concrete. It sounded, it sounded like running. Okay. Could you tell at that time whether it was an animal, whether it was a person? Just from listening? No. Okay, now here's the remaining critical part of her testimony. Remember what she said. She heard, um, she she heard something that sounded like running from the left to the right, as and 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 meaning her left when looking out the kitchen. So. Uh, this is what we're talking about. She heard running, what sounded like running, outside from the left to the right. All right. Can you tell whether it was one animal or one uh, person, or whether it was more than one animal or one person? Yeah. Okay. But it was def definitely, if you were looking at the back from left to right, is that correct? Yes. And when you say from left to right, are we talking about from the left of the back of your residence? Yes. Going across the back of your residence towards the right towards the T, I guess they call it? Yes. Okay. All right. That's the other critical part of her testimony. She's saying that the running was from her left. If As she's looking out her kitchen the running was from her left to the right in the direction of the T. She is saying the T is over here. All right. Let's see. Now I'm losing track here. In terms of uh, hearing that uh, noise or some type of running, and also the word or something that sounded to you like no, were you able to, did you look outside at that time? Uh, that was no when I could see anything. And why could you not see anything? Because from looking out the window, you have an unobstructed view, you really can't see. Right now, you can just see right across a little okay. further down. Did you end up moving from where you were in the kitchen window to another? 
Okay, not to uh, belabor the point, but this is important testimony, so um, I want you to all understand what she's saying. And whenever you have a, a, an audio, oral, or ear witness, whatever you want to call that person, or an eyewitness, it's always critical to determine what either corrupted their listening or corrupted what they saw. And this is if, of course, the testimony is devastating for your side. You want to chip away at it. You want to attack it. Remember the movie uh, My Cousin Vinny where um, where the, the uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Well, anyway, there was the the uh, impeaching of the various testimony uh, by the witnesses because he was saying, uh, Joe Pesci was saying that, well, your eyesight's bad. Remember when he counted the fingers on the woman and, and, and on the female witness and she was practically blind. And then there was a guy cooking his grits who was uh, who couldn't see because of a tree and whatnot. So what this particular witness has just said that her view was obstructed because of uh, the kitchen. And I think what she's referring to is when she looks outside, there's a there's this this uh, like like uh, enclosure for the patio. Let's see if I can find what she's talking about. I believe this is what she's talking about. When you're looking out the window, it has these, uh, these, you see those partitions? Like to give the feeling of some privacy for your residence, it's a little fence. So she's looking out the window and I'm assuming what she's talking about is like, for example, if she's looking out this window or this window, this partition's in the way this fence. So that's why she doesn't have a fully unobstructed view. Even if you're looking out the sliding glass door, see the one over here? It's it's blocked. The view down here is blocked by this fence. So that's, I believe, what she's talking about. Uh, part of your residence. Yes, where did you from the let's uh let's play that over again so we can uh, see hear that again in terms of uh, hearing that um, noise of some type of running and also the word or something that sounds to you like no were you able to did you look outside at that time and why could you not see anything because from looking out the window, you have an obstructed view. You really can't see. Right now, you can just see right across a little further down. Did you end up moving from where you were in the kitchen windows? So she was talking about that fence. I don't know why she didn't say simply say that. And that's why a picture would have been handy so that uh, everybody could see what she's talking about and I do literally mean see um, but Bernie you would think would develop that testimony as to why is your view obstructed and she would have said well because there's a fence there to another, another uh, part, of part of your residence, residence. Yes, and where did you move from the kitchen window or where did you move to and in terms of if I were looking in your residence, the kitchen, would that have caused you to move if you were looking out to the back? Would that have caused you to move to the right of, of your residence? Yes. If you could, when you moved to the sliding glass door, did you end up looking outside at that time? Yes. And if you could describe to the jury what you saw at that time? I saw it looked as fears and arms I'm going to leave it on this picture. Uh, figures, meaning more than one uh, figure? Yes. Okay. And flailing, if you could describe that to the jury when you say flailing arms, what do you mean by that? Actually, arms moving? I don't, I, 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 you, you tell us the best you can what you describe. It looked like arms moving. Okay. All right. 
Did it, it look, look like, like two individuals? individuals? Now see what's interesting about this testimony is it's important to note that what she's describing is she was in the kitchen she had that obstructed view because of the the fence so then she moved to the sliding glass door where her view was less obstructed or unobstructed so that's what she's talking about and another thing I should say this could be reversed this this her kitchen could be over here and the sliding glass door there I don't know uh, which layout she had but just keep that in mind the the facts don't change as far as the layout uh, the what she's saying going from the kitchen to the sliding glass door it doesn't matter if the sliding glass door is here or where it is in this picture How do you first observe the two individuals where the individuals arrest, standing, where they are on the ground, where they crouch? How, how would you describe the individuals? In terms of, of the individuals, could you um, distinguish or did you get enough of a close of a view in terms of a, let me rephrase that. Was the view such that you could actually identify the individuals involved? No. Okay, and why was that? And by the way, I, I'm assuming when you move from the kitchen to the sliding door, um, were you timing yourself? In other words, did you look at your watch and say, it's going to take me a little longer to time yourself? No. Okay. If you could, Estimate as best you can how long it took you to move from the kitchen where you were to the sliding glass door, if you can. Again, you would think Bernie would have an illustration, uh, an example picture of that kitchen and living room, so to speak, uh, so that the jury can understand what she's talking about when she's about to give testimony on how long it takes to go from the kitchen to the sliding glass door we're talking uh, by steps instead of asking her to time it well it took me two two seconds three seconds whatever probably better to say well it's it's like two steps as you can see in the picture two three five steps whatever anyway Yeah, like 15, 15 seconds. seconds. 15 seconds. What? And you stated that you believe that there appear to be two individuals outside, is that correct? Yes. And at the time that you moved from the kitchen to the sliding glass door, did the noise that you hear continue? And I'm talking about sound, or did it uh, stop? When I remember, it continued. Okay. Could you make out any other uh, words or any type of other sound in terms of the noise other than noise out there? When you went to the sliding door, did, did the noise continue at that time too? Yes. Did you hear screaming out there? Or, uh, tell me what you just, what you recall hearing out there. I just heard what sound of I know. You mentioned some interaction, some interaction between two uh, individuals and the arms flailing. Uh, how long did you stay there looking at what was going on outside? What did you do then, ma'am? Uh, another interruption. Isn't it interesting that? Uh, she she is basically discrediting or impeaching 
or uh, those words are too strong, uh, causing me at least to to uh, wonder about the accuracy of her testimony when she's estimating times about uh, uh, yelling, screaming, and what she sees as probably about 20 seconds, and she's saying she said earlier she testified earlier that it takes about 15 seconds to go from here to here I mean I don't know maybe I, I'm, I'm off on my thinking processes but how can it take 15 seconds to go from here to here that doesn't make any sense alright um, and, and, and just to qualify that, I believe the question was how long does it take you to go from the kitchen to the sliding glass door, not how long did you take to get from here to here. Um, if, if, if that was the situation, how, much, how long did you take, then that would, I mean, maybe she stopped by the stove, then she went over here then she kind of paused here gave a listen and then went over to the sliding glass door but I do not believe that was a question the question was how long does it take you to get from here to here I guess I, I could play that again but let's see well I'm, I'm not gonna play it again yes, yes, well, I went back to the stove to turn the stove off. And going back to when you were looking outside and you observed what you already described, were you able to observe the two individuals enough to be able to give a closing description of the individuals? At that time, no. Okay. You mentioned you, and were you able to see the individuals' faces? Now that's interesting. She just keeps saying provocative uh, 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 answers. Uh, just you wanting to ask oh really at that time you were not able to uh, give a clothing description but later on she must be able to no. and in terms of you were looking back you're your sliding glass door out to the, to the thing Bernie says in terms of two, way too many times uh, but uh, that's my problem too. I, I use that phrase all the time and we really shouldn't but what the hell it is what it is in terms of in terms of I think she said flailing. You mentioned going, going to the stove. Did you remain there or did you end up going back to the sliding glass door? After I took the stove off, I went back to the stove. And did you look outside at that time? Yes. Okay. Um, at some point, when you're looking outside at that point, are you still seeing the two individuals out there? Or what did you see? When I took the stove off? Yes, ma'am. Um, what does she mean once I took the stove off? Okay. At some point prior to going to the stove, while well, you were looking out the first time to find the last door, at some point out there, did you see anybody else into the picture? What I've seen by that, anybody else coming to the backyard other than the two individuals that you mentioned? There were two other people also looking out. Okay. If you could, as best you can, tell us where those two other people that were looking out were, where they were positioned, as best you can. Okay, this is additional uh, critical testimony because now she's going to talk about John, the eyewitness who uh, uh, saw Zimmerman on his back yelling, help, help, help. Okay. 
that, that person, person that came out on the porch, porch did you see that, that person do anything other than come out to the porch? Oh, I didn't see them do anything. Did you hear him say anything? Yes. And I apologize. I neglected. I should not have led you. And I, I said he. Could that, that person that came out to the porch, could you, could you tell, tell whether that person was a man or a woman? It was a man. Okay. And when you said he came out, Tell, tell us if you, you can, can, he said, said something, tell, tell us as best you can what you remember that person, the man, saying. Uh, real quick, uh, just to explain uh, what he meant by I was leading you. Actually, um, that's usually subject to an objection, leading. The, the rule is that when you are asking questions on direct testimony, meaning you put the witness on the stand, you are not allowed to ask leading questions. A leading question is a question that has the answer in the question. Uh, you're not allowed to do that. Uh, you can do it at the beginning of testimony when there's some foundational uh, questions such as is it uh, so you work at the local hospital or whatever. But when you're getting uh, when you're on your direct examination and that's what this is called you can't ask leading questions such as he just did, which is, were you able to determine uh, he? And the answer in the question was that the person that came out was a he. There's been no testimony on that by her. So that's why he corrected himself and said, oh, I'm sorry, I was leading you. Uh, was Were you able to determine if it was a he or a she that came out? Side. What I remember him saying was, what, what is going on here? It was a phone call. Do you need to go call the cops? That's John. He said it twice. Okay, and did you see that person that came out onto the porch, onto his porch, or the residence where he came out of the porch? Did you see that person remain outside or did he go back inside? He went back inside. At, At some, some point, point when that happened, happened did the two individuals that you described as um, arms playing uh, with, with each other, did, you, did, did they remain in the correct position, or at some point were they in the crowd or on the ground? I just remember them standing. Okay. Did you keep looking at those individuals the whole time, or did you end up going back to the stove? After he said what he said, and he shut his door and went back, I went to take the stove off. You mentioned after taking the stove off, and I know you don't have a stopwatch, but... Again, what, what is, I mean, Bernie's now just repeating her statement, but what is taking the stove off? I, I've never heard of that. I'm assuming she means turned off the stove or took the pot off the stove, whatever, but a minor point. But uh, in regards to her testimony, remember that John witness John said that he confronted them uh, Trayvon and um, Zimmerman and said that he would call the police if uh, if Trayvon didn't stop it and that he saw Trayvon on top of Zimmerman going uh, hitting him MMA style so this witness is talking about what John did. Well, it probably took me less than 15 seconds okay. to really take the stove off because I didn't know what was happening outside. Okay, and when you say you took the stove off, you mean you like you turn whatever you were cooking off and move the there we go I completely forgot that she she uh, uh, explained this but anyway there we go yeah I just took the stove off to go back to the door okay at that time when you went out to the back to the sliding door did you look outside yes okay and you mentioned you observed something what did you observe outside the second time it was just, just a body, body in the grass. grass. Okay. And, and the body, body that was in the grass, grass um, could, could you tell, tell if the body was um, face up or face down? down? I remember it being face down. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
I guess I can show you this. Uh, I actually uh, am debating putting this up. Um, let me see here. Let me, let me, let's see, there you go. That's Trayvon Martin. And this is what uh, the witness is talking about. Did you see anybody else other than the body face down on the grass at that time? No. Um, doing everything that you described this, at this time, did you hear any kind of shock? When I went to take the stove off, that's when the shock occurred. Okay. After you heard a shot and after you went to the sliding door and addressed somebody on the ground, did you do anything in terms of notifying your sister or your niece or your niece's friend, or what did you do? Once I looked out the sliding glass door and saw the body, I took the dog and went upstairs and spoke to my sister. I said, I think someone shot. At some point while you were upstairs, did you hear and see the police come out? After I spoke to her and I went back downstairs, there were flashlights outside and it was the police outside. Did you yourself ever that evening go outside? No. Okay. At some point were you also later interviewed by uh, the police and later some law enforcement officer officials? Yes. Okay. I want to show you some photographs, uh, if I could, Your Honor. And you, can you see that from where you're at? Yes. Uh, do you see that there? Yes. Okay. I'm going to try it as best I can. Enlarge an area there. Do you recognize that area there as the area where you live? Back in February of 2012. Yes. Okay. And if I'm looking at, at that uh, right there, would it be in the, um, is it right here where you have been living in this right here that I'm circling? In other words, this, your town home would have been right there? Yes. Okay. And so that would be the third down from right here from the T? Yes. Is that correct right there? Okay. And you mentioned that you went out, or I'm sorry, you didn't. Okay, uh, hopefully my cursor is showing up here. But you can see what the T they're talking about is right here. And this is shadow, uh, the building. You can see the, the shadow, but the building actually starts here. And then here's uh, Main Street. Here's the front door to the residence on this side. And I believe John is right here. Then over here is a main street uh, side entrance, what they call a side entrance over here. And then you can see the area here, which they call the dog walk. The poop station with plastic bags, I believe, is right here. And she is one, two, three, I believe, right here somewhere. Okay. Uh, if you look out the sliding door, with the movement that you saw, or I'm sorry, you heard, would it have been coming from in this direction that I'm going to right here? In other words, this is the back of your residence right here. Would it have been going this way? Yes.
I'm going to show you six, uh, three, and um, specifically your house from right there where you were living in February. You did not see that. Is that correct from there? Or can you see it? I can't see my house. State Exhibit 4 is uh, with your residence in bed in this area right here. That circle right there. In other words, this is from the teeth going into the corner and then two miles down around this area right here. Can you see it clearly from that photograph right there? No. Okay. And that's what the record I'll call this State Exhibit 4. State Exhibit 5. Are we getting closer to where your residence be? This is the corner right here you would have been down to. Yes. Okay. This is a, a this is a, probably the best picture for what we're talking about, and in my opinion, I don't know why he did it like this, but Bernie should have been showing this picture at the beginning, and then having her talk about going to the window, etc. I mean, this picture is even at night, which is what the conditions were when she was uh, uh, testifying about looking out her sliding glass door and looking out her um, kitchen window. This is the T, and the reason they call it that is because here's the long part of the T, here's the cross, the top part, up here. Here's the dog poop station. John is over here on this residence, and as you can see, the laser that uh, Bernie is using for this presentation, her residence is here. Let's see, one, one, then there's a kitchen, two, three. I guess her kitchen window is right around here. And so she was testifying that... Uh, that uh, and you know what I would have done on this picture I would have uh, edited it and made it brighter because I can do this on my computer I can make this brighter and and clearly see what all is here I can even see if there's a barbecue there and whatever by simply simply uh, uh, simply adjusting the uh, brightness on it and the contrast why they didn't do that I don't know it tells me these guys are just they're hillbillies all right so anyway, there's the dog poop station. There's some plastic bags, and they want you to put filled bags uh, into the uh, plastic uh, bag trash receptacle here. So that's why it's called uh, poop station oftentimes. The bags are here in a dispenser. All right. And down on this end, Trayvon Martin is staying at Brandy Green's residence. That's down here in this direction at the other end of the T. And this is where the altercation took place somewhere around right here. Okay. Okay, here we go. Better pictures again. This was already in evidence, so why not show this? Here's uh, Trayvon Martin, and here's the T, and you can see uh, the street or something down here, and then we count one, two, three, and this is her residence, as he counted earlier. Uh, you can see the rain on the side of the building. Here's a barbecue, a chair, okay, and then her area. And remember, she testified that the view was blocked because she was in her kitchen and it was blocked down the way. So she either was talking about looking down in this direction or looking down in this 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 direction here. Yes. Okay. So this is the 
If you yourself yell out to the force, we've got to remain in the fighting door. And you mentioned movement from the back of your Okay, everyone, this is, uh, as you said, the daytime shot. He's circling this area, and as you can see, uh, there's a fence partition blocking her view this way and blocking her view that way. So regardless if she's in the kitchen or in the living room, so to speak, with the sliding glass door, her view is blocked looking down either way. In other words, she can't look out her window, at least not from the lower floor, up and up the floor she can, but in the lower floor she can't look up and down here and get a clear clear view of, of whatever. Uh, if she's up here, she can obviously, this is a bathroom, she can go into the corner of the window and, and probably see quite clearly Okay, that was significant testimony, everyone, because she is saying that the movement was coming from, well, let me uh, put it back here and pause. Okay, listen up, people. I don't know how this testimony helps the prosecutors because this is the T, the top of the T. Trayvon Martin was staying down here. I believe that um, Mr. Zimmerman parked his vehicle out here on the roadway and came through here and was down here looking for Trayvon Martin and Trayvon Martin vanished in the night somewhere down here and she is saying in her residence she saw or excuse me she heard what sounded like running from the left, remember she's looking out in this direction, heard running from her left to the right. Again, her left to the right. That seems to corroborate George Zimmerman's testimony or, or 
uh, reenactment, discussion, whatever, statements to the police that uh, and theories of the case that somehow Trayvon Martin backtracked and pursued um, George Zimmerman. Now, I don't know. We'd have to look at the other pictures if there's a way to get from here and go around like that. Or if this is all solid building, I believe this is all solid building. And Trayvon Martin kind of hugged the side of the building and came up and appeared and confronted George Zimmerman. I believe this is um, that may be illustrating the uh, poop station. These may be be trees or it could be path. I don't know what these dots are. Um, I'm just gonna blow it up and try to look at it. Anyway, but I understand understood things. Trayvon Martin or George Zimmerman came this way, and Trayvon Martin went down here and then he came back and the confrontation took place here and I don't know if these are trees I think that's what they are I don't know but it is significant that she heard footsteps or what sounded like running from the left to the right towards the T This would have been 2841, correct? correct? And this, this is your, your backyard, backyard facing, facing out towards the, the uh, dogway or path? Yes. Yeah. And, and you said, said it was from left to right going this way, is that correct? correct? Yes. Yes, from the left to right. Have you noticed that uh, Bernie likes to say I apologize a lot? He says it so often that it, 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 it's a meaningless phrase. I want to, if, if I could, could uh, move, move on, on to another, another subject, subject other than, than that, that uh, February 26th of 2012. Specifically, back in 2011, the latter part of 2011 and prior to February 26th of 2012, had you seen a person by the name of George Zimmerman in the retreat at Twin Lakes Townhouse? Okay, I'm going to speed it up. And is a fine watch person or individual? Yes. Okay. Had you come a few months before, uh, specifically before that February, handing out flyers about fine watch or neighborhood watch? And is it an individual self or neighborhood watch person? Yes. Okay. Can we have a number, Your Honor? Unlike the defense counsel and other counsel, John Guy is uh, the prosecutor here. He is very aware that the cameras are um, are rolling, and that it wouldn't be beyond anyone to use lip readers to find out exactly what uh, they're saying. Remember the football scandal uh, where lip readers were employed. Well, John Guy is not going to have any of that. So as silly as it may look right here, he puts his hand. Bernie is blocking the view from this way. And the cameras are only in this direction. They're not coming from over here. So he's putting his hand up to his mouth. Thank you, 
Okay, I'm going to uh, really speed this up now because I've, I've uh, as Bernie would say, I apologize. Uh, this is turning into a really long video. I want to go over the impeachment testimony, uh, excuse me, the impeachment um, technique, in other words, discrediting uh, this witness's testimony, the impeachment that uh, Mark Mara uses. <laughs> Okay, um, I'll pull a Bernie here. I apologize. I, I forgot that right out of the gate, uh, Mark Romero starts to show a bias uh, in this witness by asking, well, who did you talk to uh, in preparation for your testimony today and how long? And this is damning, in my opinion. Already, the tone between the attorney and the witness is is strained. You can tell they're both going to be duking it out quite quickly. Uh, the way she said good afternoon, you could tell she's on edge and isn't for a second thinking that Mark Romero is wondering how her day is going or how she's feeling. Who was the last person you spoke with about your testimony before you came here today to give it? The last people I spoke with was TC. TC, let's be a bit more formal if we might. Let's talk about his last name, you know it? Oh, that's a long time. Did you tell him that you had heard noises moving from, as you say now, today left to right? What do you mean? Okay. Today, you're testifying that you heard some noise out the back of your house and that you thought it was moving from your left to your right, correct? Correct. Um, did you tell him that last Thursday? We didn't discuss that, but at my okay. initial journey, initial investigation, I did. Well, you spoke to TCO's team about that? When we did talk, and now, now was this past Thursday? No, it wasn't this past Thursday. Okay, when we were just this past Thursday, we were talking about the upcoming trial. Okay, and presumably <laughs> what your testimony is going to be, correct? No, I'm just making sure that um, I remember what I said. Your testimony? Yes. Did it go over with you your statements? No, I read my statements. Ah. Did he give them to you to read? Yes. Okay. So let's, so let's talk, talk about which statements he gave you to read. Did he give you, for example, the statement that he gave to Sanford Police Department to review? Just uh, as an aside commentary, Mark Romero, when you have him going, ah, oh, you know you're screwed. He's going to nail you. And uncharacteristic for him look at the expression on his face this guy knows uh, he's about to beat this person up uh, 
that's one of the most uh, grim expressions I've ever seen on his face. There was a tape. Okay, you listened to the tape, right? No, it was transcribed. You read, you read the transcript, correct? Yes. In, In that, that transcript, transcript I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, when, when did you give that, that statement? statement? It was back in February of 2004. Um, 2004. Very, Very close, close to this event, event correct? Yes. Quite, Quite shortly, shortly thereafter. Yes. Okay. In, in that statement, statement now, I just want to focus on this for just a few questions. questions. In, in that, that statement, statement, did you, did you tell Sanford Police Department, Department that you heard noise moving from left to right? right? Well, you, you had a chance, chance to get a third exactly. I can have you review it today, but do you remember telling Investigator Serino your first statement that you had to talk about this case? Anything what? Doesn't uh, Tracy Martin look like a pleasant fellow here? <laughs> Whoever, at all, about hearing a noise that moved from left to right. Not good, witness. You're sounding evasive. Was that something prepared by the state attorney's office? Which transcript? The one that you reviewed that you told us about just a minute ago. Well, there were several. Okay. Let me have one more. This is uh, this is going to get testy, and uh, you can tell that Bernie, the prosecutor, is nervous and upset, and doesn't like where this is going. Uh, Mark Romero is displaying cockiness, and the judge doesn't want to see this get out of hand and is trying to keep Mark Romero um, corralled, uh, controlled on a leash, uh, and that's why she said, I don't need uh, an explanation and whatever, just show it to counsel. Okay, sidebar, one of many. Let me pause it here and. Um. Look at that look. I believe I mentioned a noise. I don't know if at that time I, I said which direction. Okay. You mentioned the noise, something like either saying no or something like who ah. Your words. Is that, is that what you remember telling the investigators right now? That's part of the conversation. Okay. Um, something else. You said they were running in the back. Remember that? I would, I would have said there were movement in the back. There were what? Movement in the back. 
uh, your words, I'm just repeating them. Um, did, did you say, say let me ask, ask it this way. way. Who's, Who's the first person that you actually, actually do remember saying the words they were moving, moving from left to right, presuming it wasn't just here in your testimony today? today. Who was the, 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 the last person you said that to? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, I apologize. apologize. Who was uh, the first person you said that to? More apologies. What's that saying? The hostility is so thick you can cut it with a knife? Something like that? These, uh, the witness and the attorney have their fangs out. I want a dollar for every time someone says I apologize. That wasn't very long ago, so things should be fresh in her mind. And what Mark Romero is talking about is that whenever you give your deposition, they provide, the court reporter provides you a transcript of your testimony, 
questions and answers and you are allowed to review it and make any corrections and you submit back to the reporter here's my corrections and then that becomes part of the official uh, deposition transcript the the original testimony and your corrections and and they always warn that if you make corrections be aware that I can comment on those if I consider the changes significant for example if in your deposition testimony you said the light was green and in your correction you say oh no no it was red then counsel would be able to t uh, comment about that extreme change in uh, at trial Anywhere in that deposition transcript you remember telling me, Mr. West, Mr. Doriano, who questioned you after we did, anything at all about moving from left to right? I don't remember. Okay. So I ask you once again, when was the first time, and tell me if it was today, when was the first time you ever told anybody that you heard or saw whatever it was, movement from left to right outside your back door. Was it today? And it's so, just tell us. I think George is loving this. I don't know if it was just today. Okay. It may, I'll ask this way, could it be that the first time you mentioned this new piece of evidence was just now as you testified? I have to pause and, and, and laugh for you because Bernie has lost his swagger in, in this particular uh, point in time. I'm going to play this again. Watch how he nervously is act. He's acting very nervous because he doesn't like the way this is going. He knows that Mark Amara is super confident. He does have a swagger, a confident swagger, and he's 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 slicing slicing and dicing Bernie's witness. So let's play that again uh, and 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 look how he is. Is 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 acting all nervous? Trick of you. One of the transcripts you reviewed. That was more recently, wasn't it? A few months ago. Yes. In that deposition, do you recall taking the deposition? Yes. You were there, and you remember your answers. I remember taking the deposition. The same deposition that you had in order to review that transcript last. Thursday. That's the deposition I'm talking to you about. Okay. Okay. Do you remember reviewing that deposition transcript? Yes. Okay. Anywhere in that deposition transcript you remember telling me, Mr. West, Mr. Doriano, who questioned you about what you did, anything at all about moving from left to right? I don't remember. Okay. So I ask you once again, when was the first time and, and tell me if it was today. When was the first time you ever told anybody that you heard or saw whatever it was movement from left to right outside your back door? Was it today? And if so, just tell us. Um, I'll ask this way, could it be that the first time you mentioned this new piece of evidence was just now as you testified? It could be, but I don't know. Okay, well, we can have time. Okay, here we go. Bernie's got to have a sidebar to 
throw off the flow. in this four-page document where you tell Investigator Serena... Okay, uh, let me speed things up here. ...back in March 2012, that you heard movement going from left. Um, town hall? 
Wasn't that interesting? Um, Bernie was all set to object, object to something, and then he uh, just sat back down. What uh, for us lawyers, that was a humorous sight. Uh, I've made an executive decision here. I'm going to uh, break this up into uh, two parts. So this will be uh, this witness's statement, part one, part two. So uh, that'll. The end of part one. Let's see. I'll put stop here.